Hello, all of my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you are doing well. I am doing amazing. It is Friday <laughs> uh, here in Plants, Pots, and Whatnots land. So cheesy. <laughs> so sorry. Um, anyway, for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. It is so lovely to have you here. My name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And for all of my gluttons for punishment who keep coming back for more, it is amazing to see you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so today I have to do some stuff that I have been putting off. Plant procrastination, I am sure that's a thing. Can we make it a thing? Hashtag plant procrastination. That's those things, those planty things that you walk past like every day and go, ah, God, I have to do that. And then you forget and then you walk by it the next day and you go oh damn oh, I forgot about that we got to do that we got to get that done today and that goes on for weeks upon weeks <laughs> anyway so we are taking care of some hashtag plant procrastination jobs today um, I'll just tell you what they are if you come back <laughs> So uh, stick around and um, find out what my plant procrastination chores are today. Oh, you wanted to see. You wanted to see what I've been slacking on. <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay, so first of all, before I dive into that, um, I do want to say check out my new hoodie. So this hoodie is uh, made by my friend John Sutherland. He is here on YouTube. He is a uh, YouTuber, a plant YouTuber out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Um, so his channel is mainly French. So if you are French speaking, go and check him out. He's so fun. He's just a super fun, amazing guy. And these are his new hoodies. I don't think they're available yet, but... Um, he was so, so sweet and so kind to send me an advanced copy. <laughs> and I absolutely love it. It's so super comfy and it's green so it fits in with the festive season. And I love it. Thank you so much, John. I love you. Um, and uh, he didn't ask me to, to rep this. I'm hoping it's okay that I'm showing this off today. <laughs> yeah. um, anywho, so to the plant procrastination jobs. So the first thing is we need to deal with all of these philodendron varicosum melanocrysum, otherwise known as the philodendron splendid. So we did a project, um, we did an experiment a few months ago where we took three of the same cuttings. So I cut down my philodendron varicosa melanocrysum and we took three different cuttings. We put one in perlite, one in water, and one in spag moss. And we have just kind of been monitoring the process and the progress of these just to see which one would root in what media the best. Um, if you haven't been following along, water has done diddly jack. Moss has also done jack squat. What other jacks do I know? Um, the one that's in perlite shocked me and it has done the best. It has also put out this adorable new little leaf, which is so cute. And it's growing another one already. Uh, the other two, the only other one that grew a leaf and that was a teeny tiny one because it was already started was the one in water. Now it does have a couple little water roots up higher on the node, um, but the original node, just nothing. So check that out. You see those little roots there. So that's where we're at. Uh, the one in moss. <laughs> this is what shocked me because I propagate in moss and it works all of the time. <laughs> So, but, but, I think I know why. And I will tell you that in a few minutes. Um, okay, so we need to deal with these three today and um, that's one of the projects that we need to do. 
The next project um, is this top cutting from the Philodendron Splendid. So that is one of the leaves. This is the new one that it put out since um, I chopped her off. So she has just been rooting in water. And we have a, hold on, Let me stop her from dripping on me. Yoink. So these are what the roots look like on this one. They're like, okay. But if you know how long this has been in that greenhouse for, that's unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable. Um, so we are dealing with all of these things today. I need to figure out what to do with this. I may, I may put it in soil and then put it back in the greenhouse. I think that's what I might do. Um, it's growing so weird because of, so this was the top cutting off the plant. So the plant had grown off the top of the pole and because of hashtag plant procrastination, that's a mouthful. Anyway, it was growing to the side because it was no longer supported. And then when I put it in the greenhouse, it started growing up towards the light. So then we end up with this funky and really difficult to deal with S-shaped plant. <sighs> so, I guess we just deal with it. I don't know. Anyway, so that is the other thing we have to deal with. And the last thing, or maybe second last, we'll see how long those ones take. The last thing is this giant pain in the rear end. This is my philodendron melanocrysum. Oh boy. She tall. I, can't, I don't think I can get it all in the shot. Huh. There she is. <laughs> um, so this one, if you have been here for a bit, you may or may not recall, we uh, air layered this because the bottom part of this plant, you can see that there's no leaves on it. It's very bare. So what I wanted to do was grow some roots here, cut it, replant it, um, and then I was gonna cut this whole bottom piece into nodes and grow those separately. Um, and then have this kind of part as the main part of the plant. Um, the last time I checked on this, there was no new root growth. Now today it's a little crispy, but I do see what could potentially be some roots in there. So whether there's roots or not, it's, she's getting cut today. I'm. I've, I've had it. It keeps flopping over and hitting Jordan while he's watching TV, <laughs> which is no fun for him. Um, it's really funny for me. But anyway, I digress. So that is what we're going to do today. And depending on time, I might have one other propagation thing that I throw into this video as well. So I think the first thing we're going to do is deal with these three experiments. I will tell you why I think they didn't grow as well as most of all of my other propagations have and we're going to remedy that situation so that is the first thing we're going to do so yeah let me just get situated here and we'll be right back and get that done okay i had to put my hair up because this is serious no more nonsense dealing with procrastination issues so, i don't know what that's to do with it i was sweaty i was getting hot the light is hot okay so here's what I think the problem was and the reason why they didn't grow as I normally expect my plants to grow in my greenhouse. So usually when I cut a philodendron, whether it's uh, a glorious, a gloriosum, a uh, varicosum, et cetera, et cetera, usually I'll put them in moss and then I put them in a prop bag, blow some air in there, seal it off and it gets really, really high humidity, obviously, in that kind of situation. Now, that's not to say that my greenhouse and my grow tent don't get great humidity. They actually usually hover between 85 and 95, and this one lately has been up to 99 to 100% humidity. However, there is just apparently something about having that in the bag in that really like condensed humidity situation that just really makes the plant grow the roots and flourish. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take each individual bag, no, I'm gonna take each individual plant 
and I'm gonna put them in these, actually I can probably fit two in there to be honest, into these large Ziploc bags. So these bags are the extra large Ziploc bags. Um, and these are what I, so I have the different sizes depending on the size of the plant. Uh, but for these ones, because they are quite tall, I'm going to put them in the, the extra large ones. Um, and we're gonna see if that makes a difference. I have a feeling it's going to. So this experiment just continues to morph and evolve. Um, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave them in the respective growing media. Um, however, I do wanna check on the one in perlite because I think that the roots may be big enough on that one to pot into soil. And if they are, I, as I've said before, I don't like leaving them in um, media that I'm not going to be growing them out in my collection in for too long because what happens is the longer you have it in a water scenario the more used to the water that the plant gets so it's growing all these water roots so then once you transfer it to soil the plant goes ugh. now I have to relearn everything all over again so then it has to grow soil roots and it's just you know a bit of a process so I don't like to let it go too too long in here so I do want to check this one Let's go ahead, let me bend you down so you can watch, because it's really exciting, you know? I'll bring my light over. Oh, I'm just gonna wreck things. Okay, there we go. Stay. Can you see that? Okay. Um, I got too much stuff on my table here. It was clean until I sat down to do this. Okay, so when I tug on that, there is resistance. Oh, a little bit too much resistance actually for my liking. Okay. So um, I definitely can say that the perlite was the clear winner. I mean, that's blatantly obvious. Um, but the question is, does it actually have anything to do with the media? I don't know. I hope that wasn't too loud. <laughs> My light hit the camera. Um, so I don't know if it has anything to do with the media or not. It could have had something to do with that particular node. Um, really don't know. So I'm just gonna try to get some of these bits of perlite off here and then I'll bring it up and show you up close how crazy these roots are. This is the only thing I don't really like about perlite. So it's one thing trying to get like spag moss off, but these little bits and they just fly everywhere, perlite, and then it's ev all over your, oh God. Such a whiner. Um, okay, that's good enough. And even if there's some left on it, I mean, we put perlite in soil anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm sure you can see from there, but let me get you up close anyway. So that is the roots that we are looking at on this propagation in perlite. So that's pretty substantial actually. So this one we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plop it right into some um, soil. So I'm just gonna set that on the top of the perlite for now just so there's a little bit of moisture for him. And we will deal with him in a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that makes things easier because then we can just use one bag for these two. I'm just gonna have to be kind of careful because this one is in water um, that I don't knock the bag over or anything. All right. Usually I would call this my spag bag method, but at this point it's my spag and water bag method. You know what I mean. Okay. So literally, we're just gonna plop these directly in here. There we go. They're both in there, snug as bugs and rugs. So we're gonna seal her up. We're gonna blow some air in here. There we go. And then I will go ahead and put that back into the uh, grow tent and we will see how it does. So I would like you guys to go ahead down below and now that we have high humidity, 
ideal humidity in this bag, which one do you think is going to throw roots out first? I'll wait. All right, let's go ahead and set that one off to the side. Woo. Okay, now let's go ahead and deal with this guy here. So I didn't bring up soil because I wasn't planning on putting anything in soil. Um, but now that I see that the roots are as substantial as they are, I think it's a great time to go ahead and put that over to soil. So let me grab my soil and a pot and uh, we will get him all transferred over. Okay, so I got my little pot. Now it may look like it's a small pot, but we need to remember that the root system isn't crazy big. And as much as we may want to use a bigger pot because we like the look of a bigger pot or whatever, we need to keep the root size in mind. So we want to plant to the size of the roots, not the size of the plant. Um, and really this one's not crazy big anyways, but you see where I'm going with that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of soil in the bottom here. So this is my regular aeroid soil. So there's the huge uh, charcoal, perlite, orchid bark, um, potting mix. <laughs> Sorry about that, my kids came home from school. Okay, so I put a little bit of soil in the bottom here and then, I'm, I mean, it's not like you haven't seen this done a zillion and one times. <laughs> Just gonna fill them in. Now, and again, I've said this before, once you pot your um, propagations, your new propagations into soil, you wanna make sure that you don't let them dry out for a while. Now, I'm not saying water the crap out of them until they're soaking and then you get root rot. Um, which is funny because when you think of it, those roots grew in water. So they were surrounded by nothing but water. Um, but once you transfer them into soil, they can still get root rot, which honestly, if somebody knows the science behind that, let me know. Because I just think it's so funny. Um, anyways, uh, you want to keep them a little more moist for the first little while until they start developing those... Um, those soil roots, just because that's what they're used to. So we'll just give her a little shake a rooney. I think one more scoop should do her. Uh, it helps also that I have charcoal in my soil because that helps with um, kind of like uh, absorbing extra moisture and that kind of thing. So that'll help out. So there we go. That is our very first experiment. So as a whole, regardless of what the reason was that this one did better, Perlite was definitely the clear winner. It got potted first, therefore she wins. <laughs> anyway, so I'll go ahead and pop that back into my greenhouse um, until it kind of gets used to the soil. And then I will, after that, after it kind of has a period to acclimate to the soil, then I will take it out after about two to three weeks and put it into my collection. So that, thank you, Eli. I'm glad you agree. Anyway, okay, so let's go ahead now with the melanochrysum. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take off this um, saran and we're all just gonna cross our fingers and toes that there are roots here. Now, do I think there's gonna be enough roots to sustain this entire plant not a chance in hell so uh it will definitely have to get uh potted and then it will go in my grow tent my mars hydro grow tent downstairs uh because it's just too tall to fit up here and um just where there's like really high moisture so that those roots can develop further uh so let's let's ooh, let's look I had it wrapped up pretty good here. Okay. Now, like I said, the last time I checked it, there was no roots. Now, what I really should have done if I hadn't been being smart is I would have wet this first, let it soak for a little while, and then taken this off because it would have been a lot easier. But let's go ahead and just 
This isn't good news, guys. Oh, wait. There is a <laughs> Well, that's annoying. <laughs> there is one root uh, right here, and I'm just trying to get the, the moss off it so we can... <laughs> you know what, though? Honestly, this is probably my fault. Um, I did not... So there is the root. If you can see that, I'll try to zoom in. Um, this is probably my fault, mainly because I didn't keep up with moistening that moss, and that is crucial for air layering. But you know what? Like I said, we procrastinate, and I'd walk by it, and I'd see it, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to put water on that air layer, and I just, it just didn't happen. So... What should I do? Should I cut it anyway or should we? I, I don't think like I can. I. Honestly, here's what I'm gonna do. And I don't wanna do this, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna cut it because I wanna cut up the rest of this plant. This is just awkward and to be quite honest, it's fugly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it below that node and then I'm going to cut this long piece into two. Um, it's more manageable and then I can go ahead and prop them in, I'm hoping they'll be short enough to prop in my extra large Ziploc bags. And then we're going to cut this whole bottom piece into individual nodes and just grow them as, as wet stick cuttings. So let me grab my pruners and uh, we'll get to chopping. <laughs> okay, now I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to see this okay. Uh, if I have to in editing, I can zoom in. Um, but I am going to try to get in here. Maybe I'll loosen this up a little. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to cut it right you can see that right there hmm. <laughs> that was close <laughs> okay so now I'll show you this whole top piece we'll set that sad looking thing back there so there is that <laughs> really sad little root that I was talking about and this is what the whole top piece of the plant looks like um, uh, you can see here that it did have a little bit of a thrip issue you can see those little dots maybe a little bit more clear on the back I don't know um, anyway they're gone now which is lovely but unfortunately that's the problem with some pests is that it doesn't take long to mar the leaves and then it's they just never really look the same, you know? Anyway, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I think maybe, well, there's nothing on this node, so I think I might cut it right here. Let's go ahead and do that. It looks like the leaf on this node didn't make it, so that was probably one of those ones that got all stuck and turned out funny. Uh, so let's go ahead and chop her. All right, so I try to get it down as far as I can so that if it gets a little bit of rot at the, the very bottom of the cutting, um, there's a lot further to go between the bottom of the cutting and the node. Um, and usually um, you can save it by that point. It just gives you a little bit of a buffer, if that makes sense. So, but these are really difficult to get down in there. So I'm actually gonna grab my scissors, hold on, okay. These are a little more narrow at the top so I can get in there a little better without damaging that other leaf. Okay, and we're just gonna snip it. Woo! Okay, there are our two cuttings. Eventually, <laughs> I'm hoping I will have a big beautiful plant. So I'm hoping that this piece I can root nicely and it will grow nice beautiful leaves. But we'll see, I don't know, I've been surprised before where the top cutting 
doesn't do as well as uh, the, the lower cutting, but I don't know. Um, so basically that's that with that. So later on I'll go ahead and throw these into some moss. You've seen me do that a million times, so I'm not going to do it here with you today. Um, but that is that. So I'm going to set those. Actually, I'll just plunk them down into that perlite right there. Huh. Look at that. Maybe I'll just leave them there and we'll see if that works. Since, you know, perlites seems to be, you know, the thing. There. Excellent. <laughs> okay, let me set this aside. And this is sad, isn't it? Okay. Take that out. We can use that for a different plant. I have a few that would really appreciate it, I'm sure. So this is what we're working with. <laughs> that looks so pathetic. Okay. So this is what we're working with. Take that old sheath off. Um, she's really cute. Look at it. It has one teeny tiny little leaf. Look. Oh my god. That is so pathetic. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead literally and cut this into individual nodes. So this will give us one, two, three, four plants. And then I'm going to go ahead and just leave that stick in the soil. Um, I'll probably throw it in a bag itself and it can just go ahead and regrow. Um, actually, maybe I'll leave this bottom node on. Yeah, I think I'll just leave this bottom node. So we'll, we'll cut it here, here, and here. So that'll give us three plants. Four technically, if you include, I can't count, okay? Anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use these because they are a little sharper. They're a little bit more sharp. There's one with this cute little leaf. Ah. There is two. There's three. And then I'm just going to cut some of this big long stem off. I don't want to cut down too far or I will cut into the... Um, the dormant node. Now this one a long time ago I did, put, <laughs> this is hilarious, this time a while ago I did put um, some of that cloning paste on so it is still sticky and if, <laughs> can you see cat fur on the end of my finger? <laughs> Animals am I right? Now it's really stuck. Okay anyways so this sad little pumpkin is going to get put into a bag and put into my greenhouse and then these three little cute nodes um, I am going to <clears throat> set in some spag moss and um, I'm not sure I'll probably use a bag because I tend to like the bag method um, and then they will be there and enclosed in Ziploc bag until they grow some nice roots and I will keep you updated on how this goes, but there is our three little melanocrysum nodes. And then I think I'm actually just going to put these guys as is right into the greenhouse and just let them do their thing. So, um, I'm still not sure what to do with that big one. I think I might ponder that big one a little bit longer. So I'll let you know what I end up doing with that. Um, if you're not already, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram. Usually that's where I do the majority of my updates and things like that. Um, and right now, if you haven't seen them already, we are doing a Vlogmas. Vlogmas is in full swing. So with the, um, in addition to my videos like this one where I sit down and I talk to you and I tell you things or do things or whatever, um, I am doing daily vlogs. So <clears throat> those will be on the off days. So if, you know, it's not like a, and to make things a little bit easier, I did change the thumbnail a little bit. So um, my branding, a lot of it is like black and pink. And that's what I use in my thumbnail titles. 
Um, but for the Vlogmas Christmas ones, I have put them red and green, so they just kind of stand out a little bit, just so if you're looking for that and see that, that's what I've done. If Not that that's not completely obvious. Ugh. Anyways, um, yeah, so I will go ahead and wrap that up. Follow me on Instagram for some updates on some of these. Um, I did share a really cool update yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, if you didn't, you can check it out there or it will be in my vlog tomorrow. Depends on when I post these. It'll be tomorrow, I think. I don't know, I'm all over the map. Okay, anyway. I will go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you're still here, my super troopers, my friends to the end, go ahead and put the scissor emoji. Um, Cause you guys know that I like to snip snip my plants and I am always doing some sort of propagation. Um, I'm probably going to, if you guys are interested, of course, I'm probably gonna do a propagation uh, update video. Um, probably next week if you would like to see that if you would like to see that go ahead and let me know throw it down in the comments um, yeah so as always thank you so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing I appreciate it so much um, we're still on a mission to make it to 10k by February um, I'm really hoping we can get there I think that would be so fun anywho I would like to wish all of you an amazing and wonderful day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all to bitty bits, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! Um, okay, so first of all, what? So these are. <laughs> Oh, damn it. I need to pull myself together. Okay, I lost my light. Come on now. Act right. What? That's attractive. It helps too that I've got charcoal in my soil because. Excuse me! I'm filming! Fungus not on my camera? Don't crawl on my lens. Where did you go?